Hi, my name is Augustinus Christiadi, and here I will show you that Bayesian rural networks are actually not calibrated in the region far away from the terrain data. And this is actually because they don't have the necessary real features to model the uncertainty in this region. Thankfully, we can actually add an infinitely many such features to the Bayesian rural network in a very cheap and a simple manner. This is a joint work between me, Matthias Hain and Philip Hennig, and we are from the University of Tübingen. So let's start off with a very brief summary of this talk. So we know that the point estimated version of a real network will yield asymptotic overconfidence far from tra training data. And the Bayesian formulation of real networks can actually be used to mitigate this issue to some degree. But Previous result only showed this in the binary classification case and also that their result is not ideal in the sense that they don't achieve the maximum uncertainty far away from the training data. And so in this talk and in, in, in our paper, we show that we can also generalize the analysis into the multi-class setting and that we can also achieve um, the maximum uncertainty prediction far away from the training data in a very cheap manner. And furthermore, um, this method can also be extended further so that it can yield better uncertainty quantification in the non-asymptotic regime. Okay, let's go much deeper into the topic. So suppose we have a real network, F theta, and then we do a map estimation on the parameter. This is uh, uh, just a point estimation. So we can show that uh, far away from the Turing data, this network will yield an overconfidence prediction. And this is because far away from the training data, the network is just a linear function. And um, when we have a, an input x and we scale it with some scalar alpha, and we take the limit of alpha tends to infinity, the softmax output of the network will tend to uh, the one hot factor, meaning that we always be overconfident. And suppose now we move away from the point estimation and we have uh, instead a approximate Gaussian posterior on the, on the network. Then when making prediction, we do marginalization and we can show that uh, in the same limit of alpha tends to infinity, this predictive distribution will always be strictly less than one. But notice here the problem is that um, this analysis only holds in the binary classification case and that this bound can be quite loose. Whereas we actually want, uh, want to um, have the uniform confidence prediction, meaning that uh, in the limit of alpha tends to infinity, our prediction prob probability will always be one over C, where C is the number of classes. And speaking about um, the uniform confidence, how can we obtain this in, in this particular binary setting? Well. If we use the um, linearization and also probability approximation, we can write down the predictive distribution in the, in the following simple form. And notice that inside this sigmoid function, uh, we have a quotient that both the, num the numerator and the denominator are linear in alpha. And so when we take the limit of alpha tends to infinity, inside of this sigmoid function, we have a constant and not necessarily zero and so we don't have the uniform confidence. And so based on this insight, we know that uh, a sufficient condition for us to have um, the uniform confidence is that the denominator has to grow faster than the numerator. In particular, if we fix the numerator and um, we make the denominator to be more grow faster than linear, meaning that we can um, we need to have a super quadratic variance in this case. And speaking about super quadratic variance growth, in the, an adjacent field in Gaussian processes, there is a um, kernel that achieves the cubic variance growth. And this kernel is called the cubic spline kernel. And coincidentally, this kernel is actually arises from real features, where the number of features tends to infinity. But the problem with this kernel is that 
it's only defined without a loss of generality in um, the non-negative half space of the real line. And so we propose to extend this kernel by uh, having another copy of the cubic spline kernel, flip it over and add them together. And then we have this double-sided cubic spline kernel. And two properties of this kernel that are very useful for our analysis are that first, the variance induced by the kernel is negligible if we evaluate points near the origin in the input space. And secondly, um, the variance of this kernel agrees with the uh, cubic spline kernel, meaning that it's, it has uh, a cubic variance growth. But it's still not clear how can we use this kernel to, um, to fix our uh, base and real network. Actually, we can do that by observing that uh, if we have a base and real network f theta, then the fact that we couldn't achieve the uniform confidence by using this f theta alone means that we have an uncertainty residual in the output of the network. So we propose to use the Gaussian process prior that arises from the precious kernel to model this residual. And then we focus on doing a Gaussian process posterior inference on this f tilde. And f tilde is called RGPR. This is our method. It turns out if we already have a pre trained Bayesian neural network, the posterior of RGPR takes a very simple form. As, as, as you can see in the slide. And this means that RGPR can be done in a very cheap and post hoc manner, assuming that we already have a pre-trained patient real network. RGPR is a very simple method, but it has uh, very interesting properties. The first one being that uh, it does not change the output of the patient real network in expectation. And secondly, the variance of RGPR, because we have an additional term given by the cubic spline kernel, we have a cubic variance in that of the standard quadratic variance growth um, in the vanilla Bayesian real network. And by integrating the softmax function with this uh, um, RGPR measure, then we have this predictive distribution, and then by using the uh, linearization again, and also the multi-class version of the probit approximation, we can show that in the, in the limit of alpha tends to infinity, this predictive distribution will always yield one over C, meaning that we achieve the uniform confidence far away from training data. And we do so in a very cheap and post-hoc manner. Furthermore, RGBR can be extended further by leveraging the information carried in the pre-trained patient real network that we, um, we assume. So we can put GP prior on each input and also hidden spaces induced by this uh, pre-trained network. And then we arrive at this uh, uh, GP prior that we can use instead in RGPR while still being uh, uh, retaining the post hoc uh, formulation. And furthermore, we can also do hyperparameter tuning on this uh, kernel hyperparameters arising from this process. And indeed, it's very useful for modeling the um, uncertainty near the training data. Here, we show results for OD detection, where we show that the RGPR improves uh, the best patient real network uh, by quite a bit of margin. And notice here we actually use Monte Carlo integration to get the predictive distribution. So we validate that our theoretical analysis also holds out in, in, in a more general setting. So it does not depend on the linearization and also the probit approximation that we used in our um, theoretical analysis.
So to conclude, we have extended the cubic spline kernel to the whole real line, and we call it the uh, double-sided cubic spline kernel. And we use this kernel to model the uncertainty residual of a Bayesian real network. And the resulting method is very simple and can actually be done in a post hoc manner if we assume that we already have a approximate Gaussian posterior on the network. And in theory, RGPR has a guarantee that it will always yield the uniform confidence far away from the strain data. And in practice, it can be extended further so that it can also be very useful for standard uncertainty quantification in the non-asymptotic regime. Thank you.